Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Section 418. Brand spanking new for everybody. We're going to talk about titration curves. We're going to try to think of in detail how the pH of a solution changes through the titration. So in class tomorrow, we're going to fill in this table together. We're going to do a few calculations to get a couple of very detailed points. So I just want to jump and show you exactly what the curve is going to look like. So if you turn your page, this is a titration curve for a strong acid and a strong base. So what that means is your sample is going to be the acid and your standard is going to be the base. So this shape of, of a curve here, very funny looking because it's logarithmic and exponential in nature is how the pH changes over time. Initially, you have only strong acid. And what you're doing is you're adding drop by drop strong base. But it's not a straight line it's because there's a log function in there. That log function makes the curve look like this. So let's chat about what we're, what we're staring at. Before we even add any standard, we have a pH of about one. One is a strong acid, and for every drop that we add, that pH is going to go up a little bit. It's going to go up because we're adding a strong base. So we add a drop, it increases a drop, it increases a drop, it increases. Eventually it skyrockets. One little drop of strong base shoots the pH from 2, 3, 3.8 maybe, right up to like 10.5. So that little drop of strong base shoots the pH up, then another little drop, another little drop, another little drop, another little drop, the pH starts to curve and eventually mellow out somewhere at around 13. So it starts off at 1 and it ends at 13, and we're going to talk in detail about that. This almost vertical section here, um, at the halfway point, if you go over you're going to get 7.0. That should make a lot of sense to you. At the halfway point on this curve is when you have the strong acid concentration equaling the strong base concentration. And when an acid equals a base, it gives you something that's neutral. So halfway through the pH curve, you're going to get your neutral solution. This is the um, stoichiometric point of your titration. This is when the ratio is true. Um, it can be called the end point of a titration. This is what you, you all did on Monday. You, that solution turned pink right there. Okay. This is the halfway point through a titration, and this is um, a value of 7 when you have a strong acid and a strong base added together. Okay. So you need to be able to describe the shape of this curve, starting from a strong acid of a pH of 1, ending at a strong base at a pH of 13. This chart will fill in tomorrow you're each going to be given one of these lines. You're actually going to figure out those those pHs. And uh, you're going to do a lab on this, and you're actually going to see this um, graph form right in front of your eyes. It should make you think a little bit. If you want to flip the page in your notes, let's have a quick look at what the weak acid strong base graph looks like. These are a little bit more complicated. They're not as straightforward. So when we call these things weak acid strong base curves, Remember that the weak acid is your sample, that's what you're starting with, and the strong base is your standard, that's what you're adding. So what that means is, is because you're starting off with a weak acid, you're not going to be at a pH of 1, where we were a minute ago with a strong acid, we're going to be at a pH of 3, because that's about what a weak acid is. I also want you to notice, in the strong acid curve, it starts at 1 and it kind of goes up nice and neat like this. Um, we don't have that in a weak acid. Um, it's much more complicated, so you're going to want to slow down and press pause and think about this. And In a weak acid curve, you have to remember that this ionizes very, very little. So there's very little product here. There's very little OH, sorry, H3O+. And since I'm adding dropwise a strong base, OH-, for every drop of OH- that I add, I'm going to get rid of a ton of H3O+. And there isn't a lot of H3O+, kicking around. So my first few drops of OH 
doesn't have a nice gradual curve like the strong acid would. It shoots kind of straight up kind of quick. And then something really strange happens. It doesn't continue on its same path. Okay, it's not linear. This region right here is called a buffer region. And we're going to talk a lot more about buffers later. I'm going to not use that word right now. What this region is, is an equilibrium. The equilibrium that exists is the weak acid in water. It's basically hydrolysis, forming its conjugate pair in H3O+. So for every OH minus drop that's added, H3O plus is removed. But because this is an equilibrium, it is going to shift right to replace that H3O plus that was just lost. So if I add a drop of standard OH, remove a bunch of H3O plus, equilibrium says not a chance, it shifts right to remove the H3O plus, and minimizes the change in pH. So it doesn't continue on the same path. It fights and fights and fights and fights and it shifts and it shifts and it shifts right until right around here, that very next drop of OH removes the last little bit of H3O plus in our sample. And we don't have an acid sample anymore. That last little bit of OH minus gets added, removes all the H3O plus, then the pH skyrockets because now the next drop is just pure OH minus. There's no acid around to, uh, to try to neutralize it. So it skyrockets just like in the strong acid, strong base graph. Again, the halfway point here is what we care about. pH at a half is not going to be equal to seven anymore. If you look at where this graph is, if we go over, it's somewhere around nine. And the explanation of that is very straightforward. It's 9 because this equilibrium has been shifting right. And when it shifts right, it's making a lot of, guess what, weak base. So when this thing is shifting right, to counteract the OH minus that's being added, it's making a weak base. That weak base has a pH somewhere around 9 or 10. So like in our strong acid, strong base curve from two minutes ago, the pH is not 7. This is not neutral. It's slightly basic because we have a weak base being formed. Then the drops of OH keep adding, and then it finishes off the same, ends at around 13 because we have a strong base. So just to go over that one more time, we have a pH of 3 at the beginning because you have a weak acid. The first few drops of OH- minus remove a ton of H3O+, plus because the equilibrium hasn't started to shift yet. That's why there's a net change that we've talked about in Chapter 2 and Chapter 3. There's a net change in concentration because equilibrium doesn't shift instantaneously. There's a little lag period there. So when it realizes the H3O plus is starting to leave, it shifts to the right to replace it, and it fights and fights and fights and fights through this buffer region. Eventually, it shifts as far as it can go. It can't shift anymore. It's done. It's called overwhelmed. And the very next drop of OH minus skyrockets this pH. Halfway up that vertical section, near vertical section, is the pH at the end point, or the equivalence point, or the stoichiometric point. It's all the same thing. It then finishes off like it normally would for a strong base. To do that in reverse is here. This is a weak base, strong acid titration. The weak base is going to start somewhere at around 10. It's going to go straight down, then it's going to level off as equilibrium shifts and shifts and shifts and shifts to the right. Eventually it gets overwhelmed, it can't shift anymore, shoots straight down. Halfway in this vertical section, is the pH of the endpoint, or the stoichiometric point, or the equivalence point. It's going to be around 5, because in this equilibrium, when it shifts right, it's making a weak acid. Weak acids have a pH of around 5. Then it's going to end up down really low at around 1, because you're adding a strong acid. Okay. So there are four types of curves. We're going to review all these first thing. And then you're going to do a little activity 